Are you bringing on new positions and need a way to stay organized as you expand and grow your business? Well, you might be considering creating an applicant tracking system. And I'm happy to tell you that it's possible to do this without a single line of code. I'm talking about launching out your own applicant tracking system within moments thanks to Softer, a front-end solution to allow you to build better no-code applications. If checking this idea out is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting, and it's our mission to help you to get organized and automated with no code. No code is an incredible new revolution in software that allows us to build our own custom applications without needing to know how to code. And Softer, the tool that we're focusing on here today, is one of the leading softwares in this space. Now, before I get going, I wanna invite you to join me, follow along in your own Softer account. If you don't already have Softer, no problem. You can sign up and start your free trial using our link that I will share wherever you found this video. Go ahead and use that link, plug into Softer, and we can start building together. Without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. Here I am inside of Softer, and I've already logged in. When I'm ready to build a new application right here in Templates, this is what I'm gonna use here today. So I'm gonna click on this, and I'm going to search for Applicant Tracking. Just like that, you see Applicant Tracking pop up. So this is a preview of that template. We can cycle through, all the different pages and elements of the template that's been built. And we can also decide what our back end is going to be. So the first key takeaway for you is to understand that Softer is that top layer. Softer is how people are going to interact with your data. It's gonna make things nice and pretty and give people logins so that they can see the data they need to see to move the operation forward but it's not the data itself on the back end necessarily. So here we're gonna say use template. And the first thing software is gonna ask of us is, well, what do you want your data source to be? Where are you storing that data? And you can choose for this template, either Airtable or Google Sheets. Now I wanna highlight here that software integrates with other tools as well as they're currently in beta for their own backend data source. So there are a lot of different options for you. But for this example, this particular template, I'm gonna go with Google Sheets because it's available here. So if you have not already synced up and integrated your Google Sheets or your Airtable with Softer, you'll be asked to do so in the very next step. But right here, I'll just continue and we will create that Softer application. Not only is this template building out the application template, but it's also copying the data for me back inside of Google Sheets. Now, before we go to the actual application, first I want to direct our attention back to Google Sheets. So here I've opened up my Google Sheets and you can see that just now, a brand new Google Sheet was created. This is called, by default, Copy of Applicant Tracking by Softer. And we can see that it was just created. I haven't actually opened this yet, but I can go ahead and do so by clicking here, and it's going to open up the entire Google Sheets that is the back-end data for the template that I'm building. And here we see that we have three key sheets or sets of data that are all interrelated and they're gonna be talking together and working in tandem. So the first of those is applicants. Presumably, these are gonna be the people who are applying for various jobs. Secondly, we have positions. So if I flip over to positions, we see a lot of data here about different positions that we have made available, the status of these different positions, whether open or closed. We see a description, other elements associated with the various positions of our fake template job. And then lastly, we have interviewers over here. And these are the people, presumably on our team, who are going to go through the interview process and ultimately hire. So this could be our HR team and maybe the management of various other departments so that they can make determinations as they grow out their teams. Now, something I want to point out to you is that each one of these tables has this thing called a softer record ID. This is locked down, as you can see, you should not make any changes to this component of your backend data. This is the ID for every piece of data that Softer is using on the backend. And it's able to take this record ID and interrelate all of the different pieces of data as they are connected to one another. All right, so let's go ahead and now pop back to Softer. 
Now that we have a basic understanding of the backend that was created for us, let's go to our application. So just like this, we're gonna say go to application. It's gonna take a moment to load. Remember, this was just created with the push of a few buttons from the template that already exists for free in the softer space. So here I am on the home page of my applicant tracking system by Softer, and we can see here it's saying you can log in and explore this template using the credentials for Lucy, the interviewer. So presumably the people who access this particular application are gonna be the members of our team who are going through the interviewing process and determining who will be the best fit for the various open positions we have. So the first place you might wanna draw your attention to is on the upper left corner, we have pages. The pages is where we're gonna see all the different pages within our application. And again, all of these were created for us automatically. Now you might first notice that each of these pages has a little icon. And that icon is a symbol for the type of access granted by these different pages. So many of these pages are locked down by this little padlock. This suggests to us that only certain users can see this information. And as you see, as I hover over this, we see that only logged in users can add a job or see the add a job page. We can go to that page and it looks just like this. A pretty simple form where we're putting in some information about a job and then we click submit or add job at the bottom. Now, similarly, I can look at other pages that do not have that password protection. So for example, my forgot password page. If someone's trying to log into the app, they can't actually log in, they forgot their password, well, non-logged in users can see this page. So that is a pretty simple page and it just looks like this. It's got forgot password, nothing super special here. If I can't log in, then of course, I'm gonna need to be able to see this. And so those permissions are already granted in this application. So we've got these basically two different user groups, people who are logged in and people who are not logged in. Both sets of people can actually view parts or subsets of the application, but not the same version of the application. Certain things are only available to logged in users. Now, next, we might want to change the look and feel of our application so we can come down to theme and we see what our heading color is. We see what our heading font is. And you'll notice that setting the default styles and colors is going to do this for all blocks. So we can also manually change the style element by element. If I just wanted to change, let's say, this button, recover password, I could select it, change the color, and just impact this individual button or I can do it at the higher level, change the entire theme. So maybe I don't like this font all that much and I wanna give it a different look, right? So I can make this selection and select save and everything, all of my blocks are gonna get reloaded with the new font as you see here. And it's not just the page I'm on here, any of the pages are gonna reflect those changes based on the new font that I selected inside of theme. So my different options here are font for the heading, uh, the colors, the weight, the body font, et cetera, et cetera. All these options in terms of how I want to display all these components inside of my application, pretty straightforward, just a few clicks, and I can impact all of that. Next up, we have our users. Now the users actually has a direct relationship with the data that we store in Google Sheets. So right here, you're going to see that we have three different users, Ari, Lucy, and Andy. If I flip back into Google Sheets really quickly, those are exactly the same three people that are listed here inside of our interviewers. So there is a direct integration between Softer and Google Sheets. And the users who are able to log in and access our application are stored right here. They're also visible here in Softer. And lastly, I can check out their magic links. Just by clicking any one of these magic links, our users can get immediate access to the application without needing to remember their password. The magic link is a lovely, simple solution for people to get immediately in there without needing to go through the whole password, forgot password, etc. Also note here that we have user groups. We can go over to user groups and for this particular application, we don't have any. But if we had different roles or responsibilities within our interviewers, we could create different user groups and then further limit what people have access to and how they're allowed to interact with the application. Now, since we have no user groups, if someone's logged in, 
That's it. They're a logged in user and they have a logged in user permissions. But we could get more granular if we wanted to. We might have managing interviewers and then HR interviewers, and they might be two different subsets and they might need different data. Now, lastly, we're going to take a look at the fourth component here to software, which is the settings. And here's where we can change the subdomain, create a custom domain, uh, build out external integrations, add some SEO, custom code, user notifications, etc. So all of those big settings that we'll need once we've launched our application can be controlled right here. So that's it for the back end setup. Now I want to dive into the actual application. And rather than going back page by page into the softer components itself, I'm just going to go right here to publish and I'm going to publish my application. Now, if I were to just go to the subdomain that was just created for this app, it's going to be here as a non logged in user because here I am. I haven't logged in. I have not used a magic link in order to get access. And so I would need to first sign in as Lucy in order to get access to this whole experience. So rather than do it this way, let's go back to our users here. And here is Lucy's magic link. I will just copy this and in a new tab, paste that in. And now I'm loading the application as Lucy. So after just a moment, we now see what Lucy sees when she logs in. First and foremost, up in the upper right corner is Lucy's profile picture. And this information is actually driven by the photo that is back here. So if I were to look back at Google Sheets, this photo right here is Lucy's profile picture. And that's what I'm seeing when I'm back in the app. And I'm seeing that Lucy is logged in and I'm logged in as her. Now on this homepage, I have a little bit of an overview of what this application does. It allows me to view and manage current job opportunities, view and manage job applicants in one place. And then as a hiring manager, view and assign hiring managers or interviewers to applicants. And then of course I can manage my own account. So let's take a look at these things. First, open roles. This is going to show us all of those applications for open positions that we have yet to fill. Just like this, I see head of innovation is yet to be filled, head of research, chief design officer, et cetera. Now again, all this data is being driven back here from Google Sheets. I can go back to positions and these are the positions that I'm seeing, head of innovation, head of research. And the fact that they are open here is what's filtering them in to the view that I'm seeing right here. Note that I can add a job. Software is amazing because it gives me full CRUD permissions. CRUD, of course, standing for create, read, update, or delete. Inside of software, I don't need to have direct access to Google Sheets. If I need to create a job, a new open position, I don't want to have to go into Google Sheets and start typing in a spreadsheet. No, I want to do that right here. So I add a job and it opens up a form. I can have new example job with a brief description and the location where this job will be stored or housed. Maybe this is a San Francisco job. I can add that job right here. And that simply, that job is going to be created back here inside of my data source. So here it is, new example job. This is the description located in San Francisco. Pretty cool stuff that we have this capability right here in software. I can also drill into these jobs, right? I can click into one of these jobs to see more about what this job is. So here we see the job specs, all the main duties listed out, required experience. And right now we don't have any applicants that we've connected to this job. We can do this for each of the jobs and go line by line and see exactly what that job is all about. And if we ever need to make changes here, we can update the job specs just like this. We can update the location quite simply. We can update that brief description. And then of course, the longer description here, as well as the required experience. All of this able to be edited right inside the application. Now let's X out of here and go to a different page. Since we've already added a job from this button, we can skip over adding a new role here, but let's go to applicants. These are the people who have applied for various jobs and we might be considering hiring. So we can actually take a look at them right here, drill into any one of these applicants and of course, update the stage. So right here at the top, we see that we've decided to forego a few of these applicants. Something was missing, not the right fit, no hire showing up right here at the top. But you can also see that down here, 
Cameron, for example, is still in the decision needed phase. We haven't quite pulled the trigger one way or the other. So first let's click in and take a look at this particular applicant. Here is Cameron's headshot again, his name up at top, email address, contact number. We can click in to view Cameron's resume. You see I've just downloaded it and I can open up the source file and look at his resume that he's uploaded to the system. Similarly, here's some copy from his cover letter and we can see where he's at in the process. So we can see that back in 2019, well, this is a little overdue, Ari has been assigned to stage one, which is that phone interview. Stage two is TBD. We can update that applicant stage just by clicking right here and we can decide if he is being actively interviewed or if we are going to be hiring him or if we are gonna pass. All of that can be controlled right here. We click update and as you'll see in just a moment when the page reloads, Cameron is now in the hired stage. Now, one thing to be aware of when it comes to softer is that we do need to refresh the back end here. So if I click out, it still says decision needed because I have not refreshed this page. So if I just go ahead and hit F5 or refresh the page, when I look at Cameron now, we're gonna see the updated data right here. Now, lastly, we can also scroll up here for my actions. And this is where we have been assigned various tasks in the process of hiring. Now, since I'm impersonating Lucy, these are those things that have been assigned specifically to Lucy. So if I click into Lane here, for example, as Lucy, I am going to see this because here it is, it's been assigned to me. I gave this candidate a score of three, I moved them to the in-person stage, and next up is Ari. So because of the fact that I've been assigned these different action steps within the process for this specific applicant, as Lucy, well then I'm gonna see that information right here. And of course, if I needed to search for somebody, let's say Lee, I could just start typing. It's going to filter out the data that I see and get me to what I'm looking for that much faster. I know we covered a lot for this particular template and did it in a short amount of time, but I hope to convey to you how powerful Softer is, and it's such a vital component for you to build those really dynamic front-end portals so that your organization can work more collaboratively. I hope you got a ton of value from this video. Let me know what questions or comments you might have wherever you found this, and of course, in the meantime, keep on building.